Okay, I'm still working on the donkey part, right? Now there's a few things I can do. I have it as a type tool right now. Obviously I need to move this Y in, but the type tool won't let me do that. So I can create outlines. Right? And by creating outlines, each of them is their own path. So I can find the Y, select it, use the large selection tool and grow it, make it a lot bigger. The Y is so cute. Right. And this Y is gonna be a little different from the My Little Pony Y because donkey is a much longer word, right? So I wanted to create outlines so that I could go in then and kind of tighten it up. So I want the long tail, but I don't necessarily want it to be so bold here. So I might take my pencil tool. This is the beauty of Illustrator with the magic scissors. And I might shrink the Y a little bit. I have it set on really smooth. So even though I'm a little jittery, it should clean it up for me. There we go. And you're not trying to get absolute perfection here. And if I want it to be a little edgier, it's kind of the, the mashup, right? I can make it a lightning bolt in the Y. So it's just not all so cutesy. Ugh. But this is playing with the different accuracy settings on the pencil tool, right? So it's still kind of smoothing it out too much. Set it to be more accurate, and then I can always use the smooth tool. The hardest thing to do with the smooth on is get kind of straight edges, because it always wants to round things. Now there's an easy way to get straight edges. With the pen tool, you just convert the anchor point so it doesn't support curves anymore. So if you're just not having any luck with the pencil tool, because it's hard to force your hand to be that aggressive, <laughs> at least for me. Then what you can do, well, that's what I want. Oh, hope that sticks. That's pretty good. Is use the pen tool and the anchor point conversion. And for all the curves, you can just turn them into straights. Right? So that's pretty helpful. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to continue that. Maybe extend it one more time up. So Illustrator is a very responsive tool. The problem is it takes a lot of kind of problem solving to use your ideas. And then I can use the convert anchor point tool to turn that into a straight, to turn this into a straight. Okay, now I've got the Y. I just need the rest. So I'm gonna select all of these, hold down shift and command, select multiple paths, use the large selection tool, just kind of squeeze it in. And then for the individual spacing and kind of tilting and playing of the letters, I think that's still something I need to work with. I can go to each one individually and play with the sizing and the tilt. I'm gonna shrink the E a little bit, give more room for the K.
I can use the arrow keys to move them up or down, which you can't as a type tool, but when you create outlines, make them into a vector, you have full control that way. I could redraw the edges if I was being paid a lot <laughs> to give this more time. And trying to pay attention to the spacing between the letters that feels natural. I actually might tilt the Y a little bit. Nope, not all of it. Let's see. So again, if you're having trouble just isolating selections, that's where locking can be very helpful. Locking certain layers. And remember, I showed you that trick last time of going to Object, Transform, and Shear. And that just spread it out a little bit. It remembered my last thing. I can try exaggerating that. And it just kind of opens up this Y. So picky. But let's do 12. And that gives me a lot more space to play with the rest of the letters. I'm going to go ahead and lock the Y. It's in the place I want. And then the rest should be easier to select and isolate. Now, what do you guys think? Do I need the skulls instead of the hearts for donkey? Or do I need the hearts a little bit? My thinking is I need the hearts, but I don't want two next to each other. It looks, yeah. looks just kind of lazy. Uh, it's kind of weird because you, you have skulls in the, yeah. in the feet. I do have skulls. So you think I should have skulls just here too? Or maybe a heart here and a skull here? Yeah. All right. Let's just do that. So I'm not even going to – well, yeah, I guess I'll do it right. I should blob brush first, right? and fill it in with black. And then I have to go unlock and search out. Here we go. My different skulls. Copy it, paste it. Bring it in. Actually, I don't want that one. I want this one. Copy it, paste it, make it larger. Bring it in. Yeah, that's nice. Use my arrow keys to place it. And then for the whole thing, I want to stroke around it. Uh -huh. ah. Just trying to figure out how to unlock it. <laughs> There we go, finally. Okay, so now I can select the whole thing and I can add a white stroke. I, I love in Photoshop how you can make the stroke on the outside or on the inside or in the center. In Illustrator, I've only ever seen that it's always a centered stroke. So it means it grows to the outside, but also to the inside, which is a little bit of a pain when you're looking at all your precise measurements. But this looks OK. And then I just might take the whole thing along with this extra skull. Wait, where's the skull? Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. 
one of these. It's that one. I'm going to move that into the donkey group. All right, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to move this or play with its placement, right? Because placement is, is what the vector is all about when you bring it in to your poster, you don't get to play with too much in terms of how things are laid out, especially if you have black and white and strokes in the design. Okay, so that's my my belittled donkey. Yeah. All right. So the one thing I want to change is the angle of the B. So just remember you have control of all these things, but you have to be organized about it and know what they are. So if I'm going to change the B, I have to change the two skulls that relate to the B and the B letter form as well, right? And then just using this the large selection tool, I can pull it, I can stretch it. I wanted it to, yeah, interfere a little bit with the heart. think just like that. And then I just need a little bit of space with all the rest. Like I think that E, I have to shrink. And move a little bit. And then the L, move it a little bit, maybe tilt it a little bit. So this is picky, but it all makes a big difference. And I never, I didn't use the type on path tool for any part of the my little donkey text, but by having outlines, I can make them look like they're kind of flaring out a little. Or not. So I have that, those options. It's all very slight movements in Illustrator with the mouse, though. I do like how the stroke is um, doing a lot to soften the edges. And then the eye has two components, right? I was thinking of maybe replacing the, the circle of the eye with, with the skull, but actually I think a heart would make sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that. Right. Remember, this is an outline with a stroke. I haven't outlined this, the stroke, so I should just be able to draw it once. Redraw it with the pencil tool and have the heart. Aha. So now let's just smooth it out. Actually, I kind of like the messy looking heart. Uh, maybe a little smoother. Okay. And then this L. And then the E. So ironically, in my experience, kind of like I've shown you here, the easiest things to do are the most modern typefaces. Because you don't have to do all these tiny little adjustments of hand done text to make them look good. And details do matter when you're looking at type especially as a vector, it's going to bug you if something just isn't as clean as it could have been bringing it over. Okay, so my little donkey. Last thing. Hmm. I'm going to duplicate the heart, paste it in.